Hey there my fellow designers and creators, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in my YouTube channel. This time we're going to be doing something in After Effects and we're going to be recreating Apple's newly launched Dynamic Island animation in After Effects. I had a lot of fun making this and sort of replicating it and I've tried to make it as close to the original animations as possible. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so here I'm in After Effects. Now, you can actually get the project files to this down below in the description. There's gonna be two links. The first link is basically going to have just assets for you to start using. It won't have any animation, sort of like an asset file, which has all the assets. All you have to do is open up After Effects and then just start animating. The second one has the complete file of everything that I'm gonna be showing you over here. And what that means is I have five different types of animations. So if I zoom in a little bit closer over here, whoa, that was too much, right? So if I zoom in over here, uh, this is one animation that I made. And then we have another animation which uh, goes like this, sort of uh, expands. The third animation is going to have this sort of a blob effect that you can see over here. It's a pretty cool blob effect. I'm gonna show you how to do this as well. Uh, and then the fourth animation, um, it's just a a scale from a big pill to a smaller pill and uh, the fifth animation is going to be a small pill to a big pill. Now this doesn't really have any assets inside animation 4 and 5 um, but if you want you can go ahead and add anything that you want. I've added it for animation 1, 2, 3 um, because it was quite easy to be very honest um, and animation 2 here as well has this all these are assets that I actually made uh, in After Effects and animated them, right? Uh, you can even see that there's this sort of, uh, you know, like this, like this thing. I'm going to show you uh, how to do this as well. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. So I'm just going to go ahead and close all of this because we just want to focus on this one. And this is pretty much what you're going to get when you download the file and uh, or or at least some version of this for you to get started. Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually taken this thing and let me just rename this and I'm gonna call this um, demo video. Okay, and this is basically uh, the video I pulled from Apple's website. So this is designed by Apple. It's basically like an MP4 video. And let's try to understand what's actually happening when we look at this dynamic island, right? So as I go further, you can see that it expands from the center. And you can also see that there's a little bit of a bouncy animation, right? And I'm going to show you multiple ways of making this bouncy animation. There are simple ways, there are complicated ways. I'm going to show you what works best in what scenario. And you can definitely take a call on it. Okay, so you can see here that it expands and there's a small bounce, okay? And let's look at this section, um, which has uh, all these um, icons. So you can see that these just move to the side and this also has that bounce effect, as you can see, it sort of bounces back, right? This is all a part of Apple's fluid interface mechanism, all right? So this is gonna be super simple and there are multiple ways to do this and I'm gonna show you the most easiest and the most simplest and flexible way to do it. So let's get started, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle. So uh, I'm gonna come over here and click on the rectangle. Now, ideally you could have selected the rounded rectangle tool, but I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna select the rectangle tool because I want complete flexibility and it's actually simpler and I'm gonna show you what I mean, right? Now make sure you have this star icon that you can see under the cursor. That basically means it's going to create a shape because if you select a layer, you can see that the icon changes to something else and that basically creates like a mask. So as you can see, it creates a mask and we don't really want that. Okay, so go ahead and make sure you don't have any layer selected. So just click somewhere or anywhere where no layer is selected and make sure you have that star icon. And let's zoom in and I'm gonna go ahead and create like a shape layer. For now, I'm just gonna change the color to something different so I can actually see and overlap things better. Um, all right, there we go. So, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and align it like this, right? So it, it doesn't have to be super perfect, just align it. I'm gonna uh, press enter on my keyboard and I'm gonna call this pill uh, and uh, there we go we have our pill over here now what you want to do is you want to come over here open this up you want to go to contents you want to go to rectangle you want to go to rectangle path and and then you want to click on this rectangle one over here so make sure that you have rectangle one selected and then you have position also selected or basically anything and then right click and you want to choose this thing that says convert to bezier path okay so you click on that and what then happens is you get this path option and this is what we're going to be controlling quite a bit. Now, what this does is basically allows you to, uh, if you if you click on this path, uh, make sure you click on it, and then you can get these four anchor points, and you can customize them in any way they want. All right. So I'm going to select all of this, and then I'm going to hold down Shift, and then I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to match this to this, and then select all of this, and then I can click and then drag, and then make sure that I just use my arrow keys to sort of round this up. Okay. 
Then what we're going to do is uh, now if you go ahead, you can actually increase this roundness property that you have. But since we made this into a path, it's not going to work anymore. So what you then have to do is you want to click on add and then you want to say, um, where was that? Round corners. Okay. Once you get round corners over here, now you'll be able to increase the radius as you can see over here and don't increase it way too much. Just increase it until you seem feel, I mean, until you feel that it's matching. So uh, I'm just going to probably hit it to like 60 or maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I think 60 works. I'm just going to leave it at 60 for now. Okay. And then you can press shift and the backslash key if you want to sort of zoom out and, you know, view everything uh, in the whole, in the whole picture. Right. So there we go. Um, we seem to have some sort of abnormality over here. Uh, maybe that's because we have two paths. So I'm going to select this first rectangle path and delete it. So I don't know why that was, but ideally you just need to have one path over here, one rounded corners, and then you can even get rid of the stroke. We don't need a stroke. Um, and then maybe we don't even need the fill. Maybe, maybe we need the fill. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess we need the fill and transform over here. All right. So that's cool. Okay. Now, uh, now what we're going to do is, uh, let's go ahead and sort of animate this, right? So, um, actually I should have come to the beginning of the frame because now if I actually select this and press T on my keyboard, I get the opacity. And if I drop that to 50, you can see that the pillow is actually smaller. So let me go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to go and, uh, click on this. Oh, sorry. Just click on this and then let's go ahead and fix this quickly. I'm going to go ahead and push this back in and I'm going to select this one as well and then push this also back in. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Now, um, now that we have this, uh, I'm going to press on this button to create a keyframe and let's go forward and see where we want to, you know, put another keyframe, right? So we can see that this thing animates. All right. And also the animation starts a little bit later, right? The animation sort of starts over here, right? As you can see, so I'm going to, I'm just going to move this keyframe over here. Make sure you hold down shift so that you can snap things correctly. And I'm going to go forward and, uh, it sort of stops over here, right? Around 12 frames. So I'm going to put another keyframe over there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, uh, or make sure that you have path selected and then just, uh, create like a bounding box over this to select those. And then you can move these over, over here. All right. And then you can do the same thing for the other side as well. Uh, move this over here. There we go. Um, oh. Make sure that we come back over here and we can zoom in to see if you want to make things a little better. All right. That is looking good. And now the, the thing is this thing goes back, right? So if I move forward in time, it goes back and you know, to somewhere around 20 frames, right? Now you can see that there's a slight movement that it goes back. So let's go ahead and we can fix that. So let's just select these two and then move them a little bit inside. There we go. And then we can select these two and then move them inside as well. Okay. So now we have this. Now, if I go ahead and set the opacity of this back to like 100 and we can sort of see the animation, I'm just going to click on this button over here in the center to solo that. So I can solo only that layer. And I think maybe the rounding needs to be a little bit more. It sort of looks a little weird. So I'm just going to open that up again. And in the contents, I am going to select rounded corners and maybe make that to like 65. Yeah, I think 65 looks fine. Maybe 64. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. So let's quickly play this and see how this looks. Whoa. Looks like we have an issue. I'm going to set this to half for now because my laptop's taken up all the RAM. So let's play this. Okay. So now you can see that it's like super boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to right click and choose keyframe assistant and choose easy ease. Or the other option is if you're not able to see that on my screen, you can press function and you can press F9 if you're on Mac or just press F9 on your keyboard, right? And that will convert it to these, you know, different icon looking, um, you know, timestamps, keyframes rather. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unsolo this and then press T on my keyboard and then set this back to 50%. And now let's try to match this, right? Uh, now, another thing is if you always want to view keyframes, you can select the layer and press U on your keyboard. And when you press U, you will then be able to see keyframes over here. Uh, and let's try to match this, right? So you can see that it actually goes really fast. Okay. The animation, the black part, the actual animation, it goes really fast. Okay. And then it slowly comes down. Okay. So let's try to replicate that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come here and click on this icon, which says the graph editor, and you can click on this button that says path. And here we have keyframes. Okay. 
Now, what's basically happening is if you don't see this, you want to make sure you want to write, you want to right click and you want to choose edit speed graph. Okay. Now, what this is basically doing is it is defining the speed at a particular point in time. Okay. And that is here is measured by units per second. You don't really have to care about that. Okay. Anyway, the only thing you need to do is you want to go and make sure that you select the middle keyframe that you see over here. Okay. And then make sure you always hold down shift when you're playing with keyframes. Always make sure to hold down shift. Okay. You can see this handle. All you have to do is just go ahead and increase this. Okay. Now I'm, I'm going to show you what happens. Let's come here to the middle. And what's basically going to happen is the thing is we want this animation to start really fast. We want it to begin very fast with a lot of velocity. Okay. So I'm going to uh, hold down shift, click on this uh, handle, and I'm just going to push it to the right, to the left. And as I push it, you can see that it's changing over there. Okay. Now, what is the right value? We don't really know. And as you can see over here, it almost matches very well. And I think that's, that's more than enough for it to work. Right. And you can actually double click and you can see some values over here, right? You can see something called as the incoming velocity and outgoing velocity. Now, if you don't really understand what this means, it doesn't really matter. What do you want to do is let's go here and just set this to an even 85 so that, you know, uh, it's a, it's a nice rounded number. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, and this actually is a very slow animation um, and it's over a very large period of time. So we don't really have to mess around with this and the animation sits perfectly. So let's go ahead and try to play this again and see how this looks. Okay. And I'm just going to click over here so that I don't select anything. Right. And you can see that it feels so fluidic and natural. Okay. You can even see that extra bounce effect. All right. Let's play that again. All right. That looks great. Okay. Now. The next thing is now that this is done, let's go ahead and animate this. Now, what I have here is uh, I have this mobile signal icon um, and let me actually come to the beginning of this. All right. So I've got the mobile signal icon uh, battery. I'm going to put all of this above the uh, video so that we can see it. Okay. Now these are not 100% exactly aligned, but that doesn't really matter because this is just an animation. Okay. So if I zoom in over here, yeah, and maybe I set this to full so we can see this better. You can see that, uh, you know, this is what we have. And then you also have this bottom indicator here as well. Okay. So as you can see, we have got a copy. So I've just gone ahead and placed all of them. Now, if we look at the animation, what's going to happen is that all of these will move, um, together. Okay. And this also has that bouncy animation. Now, the thing is, we don't want to actually select each of these elements and animate them. And we want to try to do it in a much smarter way. So we're going to use an object called as the null object. So each of these are layers and we're going to use a layer called as the null object. So you can go to layer and click on new and you can choose a null object or you can just right click and then say new and then pick a null object. So a, basically a null object, if I press shift and the backslash key, right? This null object is basically an invisible item, right? You can't see it. It there's nothing. It's just a point. Okay. And this becomes our anchor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and I'm going to call it indicator control. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is then select the Wi-Fi, the mobile signal, Wi-Fi battery in the home uh, and the indicator bar and select all of those and click on this button, which basically is the pick whip tool. And if you don't see it, you can, uh, you can actually toggle down here, uh, in the bottom. Um, if you don't see it in my screen, just there'll be three options, uh, on your bottom left corner, just click on those and you can, you know, toggle on and off, you know, certain items. Um, and even if you don't see it, you can right click over here and you can go to columns and then choose the ones that you want, right? So you'll find something called as parent and link and whatever. So we want parent and link. Okay. So make sure you select the pick whip and then just drag it on to indicator control. And now that is control. So what happens here is let me just come over here. If I press P on my keyboard, I get the position properties. If I change the indic the position of this red color box, it automatically changes this as well, because this is sort of taking values from here. And I don't have to animate each of them individually. I just have to animate the indicator control. Okay. So now let's go back and reset this. I'm going to right click and then choose um, reset. Okay. So now that resets it for me. Okay. So let's go zoom in a little bit closer and see what's happening. So I'm going to um, see where the animation is going to start and the animation sort of starts over here. So I'm going to click on this stopwatch to create a um, uh, keyframe and let's just go forward. And I think this value stays the same. It stops at 12. So I'm going to create another keyframe and then let's go forward back to 20 frames because I think that's when the animation ends. Maybe I think animation ends a little later. So 
maybe we just set it to uh let's just set it to 20 okay and then i'm going to click over here again now uh, again select all of this and press f9 on your keyboard or function f9 if you're on a mac and convert these into keyframes now let's click on this again to get the graph editor uh, make sure you have position selected and right click and make sure you choose on speed graph now the thing is we can see that it's a straight line because we really have haven't added any values to this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on uh, come over here and then select the indicator control and then just move the position and so that it matches you can use your arrow keys as well and that perfectly matches and let's come over here and we can select this and then whoops uh oh come over here there we go okay and uh, let's just uh, match this to this okay there we go so now if you come over here and you click on position, you can see these um, graphs over here. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Um, I'm going to come somewhere in the middle and then see if we can find a value that lines up. So let's just go ahead and increase it. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to round this off to like 60. Uh, and now if we play this, you can see that the animation is a little smooth. All right. There we go. Now, the problem here is that you can see we have this sort of an additional overshoot animation, right? So uh, to explain this in better, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna apply a fill thing. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing this to show you. And I'm just gonna put uh, the fill color to all of this so that we can sort of see this in much more detail, okay? Uh, I'm gonna select the position over here. So if I come over here, you can see that we have this initial velocity, it's looking fine. But over here, and I go forward, it still goes a little forward, okay? Still goes a little forward, uh, we do, which, which we don't really want because at this point, we always want it to come back. Now, there are multiple ways of solving this issue. And one way is something that's very interesting is I'm going to use the value graph, okay? So we'll click on the value graph. Now, what do you see here? What's happening here is that this is basically values now, right? This is no more speed this is value so as you can see it kept going over here now this is the highest point right but as you can see over here the moment we go here it's going even further right which is why it is moving towards the right side we don't really want that okay so what i'm going to do here is we got a couple of things that we can do so i'm going to select um this element over here uh, or this basically this keyframe Okay. and if you don't really see any tangents all right basically handles uh, not tangents you can come down here in the bo bottom and then you can say, you can click on this button that says separate dimensions. If you don't see it, you can right click and then you can choose separate dimensions. Okay. So I'm just going to go select this uh, keyframe and I'll click on separate dimensions. And now that goes ahead and changes the animation quite a bit. Okay. So what we can do is we can quickly reset that. All we want to do is hold down shift on your keyboard. Okay. And then we want to sort of sort this out. Okay. And now you can see that the value, this becomes the maximum point and then moving forward, everything comes down. Okay. And I can even make this flat, flat this out a little bit. Uh, so if we want to match that, you can see that now that red thing perfectly works well. Okay. And the only thing we want to match over here is the initial velocity over here. So now this looks very close to what we want. So if I go ahead and push this, or actually I'm going to increase this. Oops. Let me try that again. Okay, uh, I'm just sort of matching it over here. So if you go ahead and do this, you can see that it sort of perfectly matches, right? So sometimes you might have to use a speed graph. Sometimes you have to use the value graph. And if things are not working, make sure you come to the value graph because you can actually tweak the values. Okay. And uh, now basically what's going to happen is if you go ahead and zoom out or maybe, maybe not zoom out, uh, I'm just going to solo um, this and the other three, four layers as well. And if you play this, you can see how the animation looks. Okay, let's go. Maybe I need to uh, set this to half because my RAM's out. Okay. And you can see it feels very fluidic. And I can just press N on my keyboard over here, um, the letter N, so that I sort of trim this and I can just play only till here. So let's play that. Right? And it feels so fluidic and so bouncy and it feels so realistic. Right? So there we go. Now, uh, now the next thing we can do is reverse this animation. So if we go ahead and play the video, um, you can see that it sort of resets back. 
So it bounces out again and then it quickly resets. Okay. Um, this is the next part of the video. So I am just going to press N on my keyboard and then right click on this timeline and then says stream comp to work area so that we can only see that much. Um, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and replicate this uh, again. So I'm going to zoom in over here. Uh, we're going to uh, replicate the pill. So as I go forward, you can see that nothing is changing. So the animation starts from here. So at this point, I'm just going to come over here and click on these two buttons, which is going to add a keyframe. And basically these two keyframes are the same. So these two and these two are the same. And you can see that there is no movement between them. And then let's go forward to a point where over here, right? So things from here, uh, the things start going downwards. So I'm going to add another keyframe here and then we can select the pill. Make sure um, you press U on the keyboard so you can get the path options. You click on the path and then you select these two and then you can hold shift or whatever and then just manually apply them. There we go. You can do this as well uh, on the right side. There we go. And then let's go forward until the animation stops. All right, so something to somewhere over here. Let's select all of this and then we can bring this back. In fact, let's actually select these keyframes. So basically this keyframe, because this is the initial keyframe. So I'm going to just copy that, click on the keyframe, press control C or command C, and then paste it over here. So then that keyframe goes over there, right? So this, these two keyframes becomes the same. Okay. So now let's see if the animation that we have matches. So if I go ahead and play this. Okay. Actually, I'm going to delete the indicator controls. We don't need that. Uh, we need only the path controls over here. Okay. Uh, you can see that. So, oh, uh, I had to put the path, uh, keyframe here as well. Okay. This was weird. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it. Right. So I made a mistake. Ideally, uh, it should have not been on the indicator control. It should have been on the pill. Okay. So you can see that now, uh, there's no movement happening over here from here. It's fine. And then from here, you can see that it goes in like really fast. Okay. So let's go ahead and fix it. Uh, select these two keyframes or whatever. Just click on the path, click on the graph editor and we are over here. Okay. Now, uh, we want this to rapidly go in. So I'm going to increase this value. All right. There we go. Something like that. And this is going to be around 60% incoming velocity. Okay. And if we play this, it sort of matches the thing it's fine if there's a little bit of a difference but doesn't really matter okay so let's try to play this again and see how this looks so i'm just going to deselect everything so that we can see play this perfect right it feels so dynamic and so fluidic okay uh let's go ahead and quickly replicate that for the indicator items as well so i'm going to come over here uh let's zoom in to see where we are Okay, the animation starts over here. So I'm going to create two keyframes for the indicator control. Let's go forward. All right, there we go. And I'm going to put two keyframes here as well. Uh, this is one point. So let's just select the um, X position. Now we can actually turn off the keyframes for the Y position to be very honest because we're not animating the Y position. We're just animating the X position. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch to actually remove all the Y keyframes and we're just going to play with the X. Okay. And I'm going to move this a little bit. All right. And then we're going to go back all the way over here and then we can copy the initial keyframe and then we can paste that over there so that it becomes the initial position. Okay. Now, if you want to check the animation, you can see that this also, you know, like really, uh, you know, mo moves uh, faster. So I'm going to select these two keyframes. Uh, here we were in the value graph. So let's go back to the speed graph and we can make the changes over here. Now, as you can see, this looks like super weird. So let's just fix it. So make sure you select the last keyframe. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and push it over here. All right. Until we see something that fits, that's fine. Uh, and then you can double click and let's set this to like 55 if you want. Uh, and you can see that it quickly starts and then it slowly goes down. Okay. So if we want to test it, we can test that as well. Yeah. Perfect. So let's go ahead and look at this in all its glory. Let's just look at uh, the pill and the four items. Um, and yeah, let's, let's see how this looks. Right. It looks so cool, right? It feels so fluid, fluidic and so dynamic. That is perfect. Okay, so in this part, basically, uh, which is the second uh, animation, 
What's happening here is that I've already done the animation for the pill. It using the same principles that we you know did over here. You can see that as I increase it, uh, I mean as I go forward, it scales and then it does like a simple bounce and then comes back. So if you look at the um, animations, just simple keyframes, and I've also keyframed the radius as well, the corner radius because the corner radius changes. So I've keyframed that as well, uh, and yeah, so. Um, this basically has no changes to the graph editor. It's very simple, the radius. Uh, but then the path has a little bit of curve. Basically the simple things that we did, um, you know, for the previous one. I didn't even have to use the value graph over here. I did it in the speed graph itself. Okay. Now the interesting thing to note here is that if you look at the time, uh, it actually moves to the left side. Okay. And it also blurs, right? Now in order to blur, all you have to do is apply Gaussian blur. Uh, if you type in G-A-U-S-S-I-A-N, you're going to get Gaussian blur and then just apply that, animate it, and then you're good to go, right? Same thing that we did over here. Since the way we animated this, you just want to apply that to the time element um, and then you should be good to go. Now, the other thing here is that here it's just the um, the signals and the battery percentage. What happens here is that not only does it move to the right, it also scales down, right? So it's a very simple scale animation that you want to do. Um, and that should basically solve it, right? This is super simple and straightforward. So I'm not going to dive too much into this. Okay. So this is part three. And, um, in this, what's happening is we're going to see this blob effect, right? So let's take a look and actually see what's happening. Now, this is actually the actual video. So you can see that there's this blob effect. And I, I'm not very sure how Apple really pulled this off and because it looks really cool. Um, but it, it's quite interesting to see how they could have pulled this off with code. Obviously, I'm not talking about in terms of, you know, design on After Effects. In code, how did they really pull this off? It's it's very surprising. Okay. And uh, there we go. So um, you can see over here that it scales. And then this second pill on the right, it just comes out. You can see it's a little bit distorted. And then it comes in and then it squishes and then it, you know, just settles back in place. You know, your, no your normal juggling uh, animation. And here, even the indicators, it's just like a slight move and bounce animation, nothing too crazy. And here again with the time, it's just, it just moves in, right? There's nothing crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create this blob effect. Um, so basically I have two layers over here. I'm just going to hide the video layer. So you can see that I have the, I have uh, one pill over here. Uh, if I can just solo the layers, let me just, uh, actually let me just turn off the camera as well. Okay. So I have this normal pill uh, and then I have a small pill, which is basically the circle. And if I were to quickly play the animation, let me just show you how this looks. Um, let me play this. Yeah, there we go. Right. So it just like, you know, bounce it just comes out and here you can see that that blob animation is not really there it's just there and then it's distorted and then it wiggles and then you know it it sort of goes back in um yeah maybe i just need to ex ex extend the time of this because it looks like okay so now uh, if we play this it's a lot we have more time so there we go. You can see that full bounce animation. Okay. Perfect. Um, so now what I'm going to do is this, these things that I've, I've already animated the Wi-Fi, the mobile and time animation. I've already animated all of those. Uh, here we're just going to go ahead and see how to create that blob effect. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to select these two elements. Okay. And then you want to press command shift C or control shift C or go to composition. And then you want to choose pre compose, uh, or maybe you just right click and then you choose, uh, pre compose and, uh, just make sure that you have, uh, you know, this option selected. You can turn this on or off if you want and then you can just um, call it anything that you want so let's call this a uh, blob okay and then you have this blob now I already have added some settings so I'm just going to copy that basically what you want to do is you want to add an effect called as the match choker so let me go back and get those settings because I don't really remember what they were which is animation 3 and if I come here to the blob you can see I have a matte choker animation okay so I'm just going to copy that uh, and you can obviously search for that here. So I'm you search for mat and then you're going to get mat uh, choker over here. Okay. So I'm going to copy this over here and then I'm going to paste it into the blob that we see over here. And the moment you do that, I'm going to set this to full. Actually, you can see that 
if i turn this off you can see that that blob animation you know just comes in and you can see that blob animation taking place now i've gone ahead and played around with the settings quite a bit to get the exact value so all you have to do is do that as well you can copy these settings if you want doesn't really matter now the other reason i've added this um uh this stopwatch over here is because if i go over here and if i come over here uh so if i go forward um uh, so let's say I did not have the uh, keyframe. So let's say it was 30 and I left it at 30. What would happen is when it came back, it would stick again, right? I didn't want it to stick the second time it came. Uh, so what I did was the moment it passed, all right, uh, maybe we can move this a little bit further. Okay, so the moment it sort of came out, I just reduced the softness of this to be less so that when it came back in, it wouldn't really attach again because the softness is very low, right? Because if I bump up this softness, then it's going to touch. Uh, if I reduce the softness, it's not going to touch, right? So basically that's how I created the uh, blob animation. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's about it. Okay, now let's go back to the first one that we made. Um, and I'm gonna show you how we basically did this animation. So if I were to show the original animation, Okay, uh, that I made, you can see that it, you can see that there is some sort of a fade animation here to the lock account. This is something that I made and it's super simple actually. And uh, it goes back in again. So basically what's happening, if I click on the lock icon, first of all, it's a 3D layer because what's happening here is I'm rotating it in 3D space. So it's a 3D layer and I've got this animation that makes it sort of rotate. And if I press U on the keyboard, you can see a lot of values and it's really very simple. There's nothing complicated here at all. I've just played around with the values. Um, so it starts off with zero opacity. It has an orientation of just 90 degrees and I've animated the position to move from left to right. That's about it, right? Nothing else. And then blur value as well. So as it moves forward, um, it, uh, it, the opacity changes to 100, obviously, uh, the orientation becomes zero and, uh, the position, it moves a little bit towards the left side because it's anchored to the left part of the pill, as you can see over here. Um, and the blurriness also reduced to zero. So all of these have different easings and different durations. So I've just matched that with the video. And then going back again, the, you know, the animation just refreshes. That's about it. There's nothing complicated here at all. Okay. Now, if you go to the uh, second animation, uh, this is uh, quite uh, interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all the elements one by one. So I'm going to start with the cover and uh, the indicator. That's, that's fine. We can keep that here. And then the audio waveform. Okay. So here what's happening is that there is uh, this cover art and all it's doing is it, it's just going ahead and scaling, right? All it's doing is just scaling. And, you know, having that bounce effect, there's nothing, you know, complicated there at all. And then you have the song name. So what's happening with the song name is a little different. Okay. If I press you on the keyboard, you can see from keyframes. So the couple of things are getting animated. It's very similar to the lock icon that we saw over here. It's basically the exact same thing. And what's happening here is that blur value, position value, scale and opacity. Okay. So it's Blurring from 100 to 0, obviously, it has to blur. It's moving down, okay? And uh, also, it, it does a little bit of a bounce effect, and then it comes back, you know, normally as well. So, and obviously, even the opacity is being from, you know, uh, 0 to 100. If you want to look at the actual video over here, you can see that animation as well. Uh, the, 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 this thing scales in uh, the image, and then you can see that, the title sort of comes down, does a bounce effect and goes up. Okay. And I've applied the same principles to the player video as well. So let me just call this demo video. Okay. If I do that to the player as well, uh, I'm going to turn the player on. Uh, so the player entire thing is one PNG. The whole thing is one PNG. And uh, let me just press you on the keyboard to see the values. So here again, uh, it's just, it's just scaling down opacity, blur value does a little bounce effect and then comes back down. Right. So uh, you can see that it becomes from 84. It just reduces down to 83, like just like a very small scale uh, rotation, uh, scale difference. And then it just position moves as well. Okay. Now, 
The most important thing here is the audio waveform. Okay, now the audio waveform also basically uh, does the same thing as the cover image, right? It it scales and then, you know, it does a bounce effect. So, but how do we go ahead and create uh, this waveform? So it's very, very, very simple actually. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a rectangle. And I've created, put this into basically um, uh, a, pre uh, a pre composition. And if I open this up, you can see we have six layers over here. So okay, I have six of these over here. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and given it a certain size in the beginning itself. Okay, now how do we animate this? Like I didn't go ahead and animate this, I added an expression. Okay, so the way this works is really simple. The first thing I want to do is, uh, let me actually go ahead and create like a mock one so we can actually see what's happening. Okay, so I have this and just assume that, you know, we have this. What you want to do is you want to open this up. You want to go to rectangle path and then you obviously have the size position over here. So since this is locked, if I increase the uh, height, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the width also increases. So let's go ahead and break this by unlinking it. And now I can individually control this. Now, what you want to do is you want to add an expression. So I've already taken an expression over here. So as you can see, I have this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to this one. Okay. And if I click on the stopwatch, it adds a keyframe. But if I hold option on my keyboard or alt on a windows and click, it makes it red and it gives this expression area where I can type stuff. All I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter and uh, I'll put a, uh, uh, I just type this down in the description uh, below so that you can actually copy it. And what's basically happening is this is a wiggle expression, which basically means it's going to wiggle it. And then you have five comma 20. Right now, what these uh, values are, uh, it's very simple. So one is basically the amount of change and uh, the other one is the frequency of the change. Okay. So if I look at five over here, that means it's going to animate less within basically five values. And it's going to do it very fast. So 20 is a very big number. So basically 20 is like frames per second sort of a thing. I don't really know what the math is, but just play around with these numbers and you'll get the idea. And then these two are basically, uh, you know, the one and value zero. The only thing it's trying to do is to tell that apply this wiggle expression to the first property. So when you look at this size has two properties, one is the height and one is the width. So in this case, the first one is the width and the second one is the height. So the first one, the width is basically is number zero and the height is going to be basically number one, right? So it's zero one. Now, if you have a position, it would be uh, X, Y, and Z. So Z would be number two, Y would be number uh, one and X would be number zero. So what do you want to do now is since you're saying number one, so basically you're telling, apply the wiggle expression to number one and whatever is the value for zero, let that be as it is. So we want it to animate on the height. So which is number one. So we apply the wiggle expression to only that. And now this weird thing happens. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to press R on my keyboard and I'm just going to rotate it like 90 degrees. Whoop. Uh, let me just fix that. Okay. So you rotate it to 90 degrees. And then if you just play this, you can see that it automatically just moves. Okay. So that's, that's about it. And for each of these, uh, um, waveforms, I gave a different value altogether. I just gave like different, uh, value. So this is five and 20 for another one. I probably would have given something else. So this was one and 60. Um, this could have been something different as well. This was five and 20. So I sort of gave different values. Okay. Now, once you do that, you have, um, uh, let's just come back to animation two over here. Um, I went ahead and to the way from, I added this four color gradient and I picked four different colors. And, uh, I, if I select it, you can see that all these four colors are like in four different places. And like, that's about it, right? There's, there's nothing different over here at all. Okay. And finally, coming to the animation number three, where we have this uh, blob effect. Um, it's really simple. The only thing here is that there's this icon, which is if I find the icon, it is timer. And what it's basically doing is it is just following this. And to follow this, what I've done is I've made a duplicate of the pill, right? This pill 
which was a smaller one. I've made a duplicate of that and I've hidden it, right? If I turn it on, you can see it. So I've, I've hidden this and all I've done. And since this spill is moving, I've anchored the timer element, right? The timer icon to match it. So you can see that here. So I've parented it to the pill element so that wherever the spill moves, this thing is also going to move. But this blob animation is also still there and that has nothing to do um, with the timer thing. Okay. And all I've done here for the timer is basically uh, added some blur and opacity and, you know, for it to fade in. That's about it. And there is also this cover art as well, which also sort of rotates. As you can see, it rotates and blur very similar to the lock animation that we saw. Okay. There's nothing different uh, there at all. So if I go ahead and uh, where, were we, where were we? Animation three. Okay. There we go. So if I sort of play this, um, it just does a very nice bouncy wiggly animation. That's about it. Now I have four and five as well. Um, and oh, I almost forgot. So for animation number two, uh, or, you know, three, or maybe let's just look at it on number four. I've added this drop shadow. So to add a drop shadow, I've just added a drop shadow effect. And then I've animated the opacity direction is 180 because it needs to face downward. Distance is 150 and I've given a softness of 160. You can give it 200, whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable. Uh, the only difference here is that this is an animation where it is going down, right? Uh, it's the same principle as this one where uh, it just becomes like a rectangle instead of like a, um, an oval uh, or like a semicircle or a half circle, not semicircle, sorry. Um, and then the fifth one, which is animation number five, is goes from small to big. Okay, that's about it. That's the only difference, right? Everything else stays the same. Uh, you know, this animation stays the same. Uh, from here, it just becomes bigger and then it does a small bounce effect. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.